97.9 KISW. Uh, our next guest we're all big fans of. I love this Comedy Central special, especially the part where he talks about strippers. You can't touch the strippers. Why, why are you paying to not touch someone? That is weird. How do you win in that situation? That is like walking into a deli, starving, and being like, oh, here's $300. Can I stare at the roast beef? <laughs> Better yet, I'll sit down in this chair and you can mash it around my mouth and balls. Please welcome to the show, Chris Hardwick. Ah, the classiest of bits. Yes, we're highbrow here. <laughs> Clearly I am too. <laughs> well, Very highbrow. We, we really wanted to highlight your more creative period. Yes, I, uh, I really feel like I've broken a lot of artistic barriers here uh, <laughs> to you guys. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, it's uh, good to have Chris back in the studio. Make sure you check him out, Tacoma Comedy Club. Go to TacomaComedyClub.com to get all the info. But you got tonight, tomorrow night, shows at 8 o'clock and 10. 30, so you got no reason to not check it out. And if you have a time machine, yes. last night as well. Oh, last night as yeah. well. And that would give you a fifth show yeah. Yeah, to go see in the past. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're a discount for last night's show. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah, It's actually a lot more expensive, weirdly. You'd think it would be cheaper, but it's more expensive to go see well, the show. Well, of course. Past, I mean, yeah, all, yeah. all the temporal energy that needs to be... <laughs> are we going to start talking about... Uh, are we going to talk about Doctor Who now? Is that, is uh, it? Well, listen, I, I, you know what it is? Because every time you and I get together, that's all we do. And I thought, is there a chance he and I can have a conversation that will not go to Doctor Who, and I did already. Yeah, well, I brought it. It's my fault. Ones, you brought it up. I'm not even yeah. the Doctor Who fan. You I just brought it up. I was I thinking know. more or less getting a DeLorean, but fine. <laughs> yes, I'm, yes, I'm way more mainstream than you two. The new I, season uh, comes uh, back on March yes. 30th of Doctor Who. Oh, it's Who. March 30th. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you a quick, uh, just because <laughs> it's the big news. Is this the last season for Matt Smith? Is these the last episode? Because he said he was done next year. That he I said that know. in 2012. That I don't know. He made a comment in 2012 saying, "After next year, I'm. I think I'm done." Well, not. It's 2013. This is the next year. It's possible. I, I mean, I, that I don't know anything about, but I do know that this is this year is the 50th anniversary. Yeah. And there are, I haven't heard anything. You're in, supposed to be in the know, man. I don't know. You know nothing? I, oh, I'll tell you this. I emailed David Tennant like two months ago. And okay. I was like, come on, please tell me. Is there really going to be something for the 50th? And he says, I haven't heard anything. So I, I don't know, but it feels like... There should be something this year. Yeah, and uh, and quickly, because usually whenever there's a huge anniversary, when it, the TV show was running, they would haul out all the old actors that played previous incarnations of the Doctor, That's and somehow, awesome. some way, they'd find a way to get them and all the companions in one episode. Usually the episodes this were not... This is big news for us, you guys! Come on! I know. Usually the episodes were not that great. It's sort of like it's a mad, mad world, or even movie 43, you wonder, like, okay, they're great people, but how's it going to all be mishmashed together? Right. Uh, but I'm with you. I haven't heard any kind of episode like that at all coming up this season, which would be cool to see. But, you know, Christopher Eccleston doesn't even acknowledge it anymore. No, no, no. Which is sad. because kind of barely did at the time. Yeah, I know. He was like, well, thank you very much for letting me be part of something that's amazing that I want nothing to do with. I get a little irritated when actors kind of don't like what they've done, especially when everybody loves what they've done. I, I Like Alec Guinness in Star Wars. I hate that. Or like Chris Hardwick with Shipmates. <laughs> well, there is that. And <laughs> I can't I tell I you how many I can't tell you how many Shipmate conventions. I've been to, I mean, Chris, and you sh never show are you, are you going to ShipmateCon this year? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go, and you never show. So you won't sign my DVD? <laughs> no, I will not sign that. <laughs> uh -huh. Listen, if you had a DVD, I would be amazed. <laughs> that show, somehow, I hosted this show in the early 2000s called Shipmates, and it was basically Blind Date on a cruise ship, but instead yep. of, on, on Blind Date, they they we sh they shot that show in L.A., so there were a lot of out-of-work actors and everyone, but, but Shipmates was shot on the East Coast, and it was just like... <laughs> Girls who work in nail salons and bouncers and, like, wannabe strippers. And then girls who I think just formed out of, like, alcohol sweat. I mean, it was the whole... The show was so gross. Oh, so, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, Chris, I have to... I, 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 I'm so stoked just because of the fact... I know how much of a fan you are of the stuff that you get to host and, and, and be involved with, uh, which is cool. Because, you know, a lot of times you do get disappointed when you meet people that... Are, you know that are involved with stuff that you like, and they're so disinterested when you meet them. I will tell you that this just ties into the shit makes thing. I, I mean, well, first of all, that was actually kind of a fun show. But I worked on so many things early in my career that I didn't. 
really care about. And so I guess, you know, maybe like five or six years ago, I was like, I think I only want to work on stuff I actually know and love and care about. Because even if it, even if I don't make much money doing it, uh, at least I'll be happy. And I, that, and it turned out to be the best decision. Cause now, you know, I get to work with Doctor Who people and with Walking Dead and, and all sorts of fun nerd stuff. So it's, it's been amazing. Well, I tell everybody that, you know, what a phenomenon for a television show to have its own companion talk show. I, you know, Chris, I don't know of any other show that I can remember that's ever had that where it's like, all right, here's a show, and now here's a talk show to be for everybody to talk about the show. And of you course, mean, we're talking about the Walking Dead. You mean talk. Here, here at the station, you guys don't do Talking BJ like yeah. the regular show. <laughs> the the BJ. Talking BJ. That, that would be, be kind very of fun. popular. <laughs> that would be fun. Chris, would you like to host? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, Boy, it was a really intense episode. There's all those people died. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, BJ was just you know going after people with a machete. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he had that knife hand. Oh, uh, I mean, man. Uh, Walking Dead's been really amazing this season, and and it was one of those things where when they said they wanted to do the after show for Walking Dead I was a huge I was a huge fan of the show and 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 the comic books and so I I aggressively pursued that job because I'm like well that's something I've got to do I have to do that show yeah so. and uh, you, you do a great job on there and I am always amazed who was the most amazing guest who you thought I can't believe you're into that show CM Punk I was about to say CM Punk I'm a big wrestling without fan without a doubt CM Punk you know they said um, they said well CM Punk's gonna be on I'm like oh it's just because he's a famous wrestler you're gonna have him on come on and he came on and he w- he and Yvette Nicole Brown from Community yeah w- was w- I, maybe one of the most amazing episodes we ever did like he was super nerd I podcasted him I went to his place in Chicago and podcasted him and he's like he has a flux capacitor in his living room and all these paintings <laughs> of like awesome. Bella Lugosi and he's like a huge horror sci-fi nerd and like it's such a cool guy he totally surprised the hell out of me but what a terrific dude are you gonna watch him wrestle the rock this weekend then no ah. <laughs> I'm still not gonna watch wrestling but he's great I was gonna invite you over since you're in the neighborhood he's great <laughs> oh, man. and the rock's pretty really funny too yes and we just had uh, uh, Chris Jericho on, who was also really super funny. Yeah, see, these wrestler it's, guys, they're, they're, I'm kind of, I'm kind of digging it. It's time for you to join the dark side of wrestling I don't fans. Know. Come on, well, see, I'm from Memphis, so I lived in Memphis when it Jerry was like the King Lawler. Yes, I yes. lived there when that was going on. The Lawler and uh, and and all all the Andy Kaufman stuff, yep. and you know uh, Jimmy Hart and all that stuff. It just looked like public access television. <laughs> well, yeah, the production quality was pretty much on par. Yeah. The BJ Shea Morning Experience on 99.9 KISW.